my sins are gone They're washed away white like snow Brought to light from pain And I'm a redeemed held by grace And I'll be found in you I'll be found in you, Lord. As a child I rise, I bore my cross to live in Christ. Fill me with your fire, speak. be found in
Sweetest of love, when my heart beats. 
says overcome us Lord overcome us what would that look like to you you know I think it would look different to each one in your own personality if you were overcome by the presence of the Lord but as as a as a body as a group that's my prayer that we would be so overcome by his presence that everything about us would change our walk you know, would just ramp up. I mean, we may, you may be walking really close to the Lord, but it would just ramp up even closer and closer. Is that your prayer? Is that your prayer? Hello? Anybody out there? Anybody out there? Two, three? I, I want to walk close with the Lord. I do. I want to walk. I want to walk so that, as Jimmy said, when you walk into a room, not that you are all that, but they know the God that you serve is on you and in you. Thank you, Jesus. We, we do thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. We don't take it for granted. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love your presence, Lord. We, we love it when we get together and corporately we feel your presence moving. We love that. But, Father, even more so, Father, we, we love to, to walk in your presence day by day, moment by moment, where we have fellowship with you where it's not that we're on our own until we get back on Sundays and then maybe we will feel something, but Lord, that we can commune with you day to day, moment by moment, face to face. Thank you for that. Thank you for that opportunity, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, God. I'm gonna call the prayer team down here. Whatever you're dealing with today, he is here. He is here and he is ready to meet your needs. This is our prayer. Open our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you.
his filter that he sees us through, I pray right now that you just lift his name on high this morning. I pray this morning that we just praise and we lift the name of Jesus. We let everything else go. We let everything that's holding us back. I pray right now, Lord Father, that we just lift you up and you are the only thing that matters this morning to us, God. That we see through your eyes. We see through your heart. We see through your compassion. We see through your passion, God. Father, we see that, God. We know how much love you have for us. I pray that we have that much love for each other, Lord. There are days when we just don't feel that love, but God, I pray that we just open up our eyes to you every morning. And right now, I pray that this is the moment that we start that, God. I pray right now, this is the moment that we see through your eyes, God. You open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our souls and our physical bodies, God, that we just see through your filter. So this morning, we lift you up this morning, God, Father, to see you high and lifted up, Lord.
Father God, we haven't labeled your grace amazing for nothing. Your grace has always been, is now, and will always be amazing to us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
that saved each and every one of us, Lord. We don't deserve it. That's why it's called grace. We didn't deserve to be saved. But it's a free gift from you, Lord, and we thank you so much for that, and we enjoy that this morning. We also enjoy the very powerful, real presence of your Holy Spirit here. We thank you, Lord, as we sang earlier about your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that without your Spirit, things can't be done the way you want them done. Your will can't be done without the help and the anointing and the, and the urgency and the leading of your Spirit. Your Spirit is critical in our lives. So I pray that you will help us, Lord, as we, as we walk with you and walk before you and live for you, Lord, that your Spirit will be not only our constant guide, but will be our power to get things done. When things come up and there's a challenge and there's a battle, help us not to give in and give up. Help us to keep going ahead, taking one step after another. As Abraham went to the place that you showed him along the way, that, that, that Moses led the people and then Joshua to the promised land. And you've been doing it ever since in many, many ways that we got to be led by you. We need you, God. Help us to be familiar enough with your voice that when you whisper to us, we'll know it's you. You don't have to shout, although sometimes we need that. We admit that. But God, we want to get so close to you that we hear your whisper and we'll follow you and obey you because you know what's best and we don't. We thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, praise God. Man, there's a sweet, sweet spirit here today. You feel it? This is, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. Thank you, worship team. Sometimes we, they do their thing and we kind of, they just kind of blend into the background, but they lead us in worship and they're they, 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 we, we pray every Sunday morning that they do it to bring glory to God and we, we point to Jesus and not to them. They, they're talented people, but they're not pointing to their talent. They're taking their talent and using it to bless, to lead us to the throne of God. I praise God for them. Okay, we're going to call the ushers down at this time to receive tithes and offerings. Um, I already mentioned your faithfulness. Continue to be faithful. There's, there's, there's more things going on uh, beyond the renovation, and God is, God is helping us to just uh, do what we can do to, to, uh, to further the kingdom. But our giving is not just to make sure we have good floors. <laughs> we give to God because there's blessings associated with that, and we do it because we love Him. We love the Lord in body, mind, soul, and spirit, and, and uh, in our finances. So let's express God our love through our giving right now. Father God, right now we just come and thank you for your presence, Lord, that is here, Lord. Mm -hmm. And just, it's so sweet, Lord, just to know if ever in need, you are there for us. Just yes. lean back mm -hmm. against you, Lord, and That's there right. you are. That's right. And just lay our burdens upon you, Lord. Lord, just right now, just take this offering that we're about to give, Lord, and just use it and further your kingdom and everything that you do, Lord. Amen. 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 There you go. Okay, children, come on down. Come! You don't have to run, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Come on down. I feel like a game show host here. Praise the Lord. I enjoy this time with you guys. I really do. Because it's just me and you, you know. I mean, the grown-ups can look on if they want to, but it's just me and you, all right? Enjoy that. Well, you know, um, I was thinking the other day uh, about games and, and all kinds of, you know, we like to play games, right? And sometimes we, we are in play sports games like baseball or soccer or football or something like that, 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 you know, we get, we get picked for teams. I don't know if you've, you know, ever had that happen to you, but you, you know, everybody lines up, you got two, two uh, people who are the, the coaches of the team, so to speak, and they start picking. And, you know, you, if you're like me, you're standing in line and say, 
I just don't want to be picked last, <laughs> you know, you know. But it's uh, probably happened to mo most, if not all of us, you know, that one point or another we've been picked last. Well, I want to tell you this. Jesus wants you on his team, and he's picked you very first. You're the first one. Every one of us is the first one. How is that possible? Well, you know, <laughs> with God, all things are possible, right? He looks at us. He has, God does not have any stepchildren. He doesn't have any distant relatives, okay? We're all his children, and we're all his favorite, Anthony. So uh, Anthony thinks he's the only one that's God's favorite. But it's all of us, okay? But I just want to tell you that God wants us on his team, okay? And I mean his family, okay? When I say his team, he wants us to be his child. And um, he loves us all, but we can only be his child if we ask him to come into our heart, okay? And I hope you've done that today. And I do this with the adults a lot at the end of the service, but I'd like to pray with you today that if you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, I'd like to encourage you to do that this morning. We'll just kind of do it all as a group, okay? If you've done this before, that's great. Let's just do it again, okay? And you're just kind of confirming that you love Jesus with all your heart, okay? Let's just do that. Everybody, bow your head and close your eyes. Now, I want, you, I want to help you with a prayer. So let's pray this prayer together, and I'll help you with the words, okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me for being a sinner, for doing wrong stuff, and I ask your forgiveness. I invite you into my heart. I turn my life over to you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your head bowed, eyes closed. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this prayer that was prayed by each of these, Father. And I just thank you that there might be someone who never prayed that prayer before, and they meant it with their heart and made you their Lord and Savior. And I just ask your blessing upon all of them in the name of Jesus. I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just fill them from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet with your Holy Spirit. And I call forth pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, Christian moms and dads and government workers and and uh, and father i just thank you help them to know that they have the power inside of them and the gift inside of them to do whatever you've called and equipped them to do father and they're called and equipped to do stuff even right now lord help them to start and to know that ministry begins the moment we get saved in jesus name amen okay you can go downstairs now I know Brian has uh, mentioned this, but a few, uh, oh, a few months back, we heard, we were at one of the Upward Games and heard Dave McCormick make the comment um, about two different uh, basketball teams, and one was over here, two young teams, and one was over here claiming, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, and you know, had the little Philippians 4.13 on their shoe, and you know, or I guess not, that would be football right here, <laughs> but anyway, you know, they, they, they were going at it, and then the other side were saying the same thing, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, and he said, all of a sudden it hit him, what if he was God, and both teams are saying, I can do all things, of course, you know, and I think in most of our minds, that means I'm going to win. Isn't, isn't that right? I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And so both of these teams are claiming that. And so what does it really mean? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That started me on a journey of studying what really, what that meant. And I, I know as, as you go into Philippians and you look at that whole you know, the whole context there, we find that it's not winning a basketball game or winning this or, you, you know, it is winning, but sometimes it takes on a little different look than we might think. Uh, it's maybe uh, a little more than just uh, amazing, I can do this, I can get through this, but sometimes as Paul uh, these words he wrote when he was facing the worst trials in his life. Despite the threat of pain and death, he realized that God gives us strength 
in a way that totally goes beyond our good times and everything's okay moments. The strength of Christ reaches down into our turmoil and often into our pain and pulls us up to understand that we can do all things. You know, as I was thinking about this whole topic, I, three, three different times came to my, to my mind, three different uh, avenues where Jesus, or where God really teaches us that concept that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The, the first one was this, I can do all things as I learn through my trials. You know, you might want to just plug your ears, you know, because who wants to go through trials? Anybody out there? No. Nobody wants to go through trials. Nobody wants to go through testing. But sometimes that is the very place that God teaches us the most. Look at this scripture. This is uh, James 1, 2, and 4. And James reminds us of this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And that is not a bad word. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. I want to be mature, don't you? I, want, I don't want to be lacking. I don't want to be caught lacking anything. Takes a trial. Takes a trial. You know, an athlete doesn't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I think I'm going to join the Olympic team in my sport. I don't think that happens. No, no, I know it doesn't happen. You know, they train vigorously and they have a lot of pain and a lot of setbacks because they know that at the end it will be worth it. I think if we talked to any Olympic athlete and said, was it worth it? Was it worth all that pain? Was it worth giving up all that time? You know what? I think they would say, yes. You know, just to look at their faces and see as they, you know, I mean, some of them, some athletes, I think, it's not even just getting up on the po getting uh, the medal on the podium. It is just being there at the Olympics. Uh, um, oh, what about this? Lose your job. For the first time in your life, having to really, really trust that God will provide for your needs and then navigate through the maze of finding another job. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. But I'm telling you, when you are walking face to face with Christ, all things are possible. You can do that. You can do that victoriously. What about navigating through d death or divorce or the loss of a dream? Those can all seem overwhelming. But even in these times, God is building in us something that we never thought possible. And you know, those of you who have walked through those things, you know those are the times some, that God pulls you to his side and gives you things that you would have never got any other way than walking through that trial or walking through that struggle. God has pulled you to his side. And when you, when you find out that he's all you have, you find out he's all you need. I want today to look at the life of Jacob uh, as we talk about this topic. And, and just to refresh you a little bit, I, I know you know the story of Jacob and Esau, but I just want to refresh you just a, a little bit. Um, you know, Jacob and Esau were twins, and J uh, Esau was born first, Jacob holding his heel as they came out, but, but Jacob, J uh, Esau was first. And so that meant that he was to receive the blessing of the Father, which was very huge in those days. But Jacob... Uh, but not only did he receive, want, was supposed to receive the, the, the uh, blessing, but that was his birthright. But um, Jacob, as we know the story, Jacob deceived his father, and he received the blessing. You know, in, in deception, he received the blessing. And then, not only that, but he uh, tricked his brother when his brother was hungry, and he got the birthright, you know, because remember his brother traded his birthright for a bowl of soup? You know, you think how silly is that? But if you've ever been really, really, really hungry or starving, I guess, you know, you might do something silly like that. But anyway, that's what happened. And here's the difference in birthright and blessing. The birthright is the authority to rule over the clan or the family when the father is gone. And the blessing is a double portion of the father's wealth. And Jacob had just got both of those, blessing, blessing and birthright. The last thing Esau said to Jacob was, when dad dies, I'm going to kill you. 
That was the last thing that he said to him. Well, then Jacob moves away. And 20 years later, he decides to return home. And this is where we're going to pick up the story. We know that Jacob was coming back with all kinds of fear inside. And he was scared. One way we know that is because he was sending bribes ahead. You know, he was sending all these animals ahead, you know, to, to try to soften Esau up. You know, the really cool thing is he didn't even need to do that. But it was his stuff on the inside of him because of his deception, because of his junk and the stuff that he had done, he felt that necessary. Look at Genesis 32. 24 through 26. But Jacob stayed behind by himself, and, and, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. We know that man to be God. When the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. That's got to hurt. The man said, let me go. It's daybreak. And Jacob said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. You see, our transformation always starts with a predicament with a problem. Jacob was walking in fear inside. Okay. He had fear inside as he headed home after 20 years and was just about ready to face his brother Esau. I think, and I'm just, as Brian says, holy imagination, using the holy imagination that all that junk, all that stuff from his past, all the deception and all the things that he had done that were wrong were inside him messing his mind up. And he was scared as he headed back home. See, we, um, our transformation, I said, always starts with a predicament, and it always starts from the inside. When he, we come to the point to face our giants, whether they be addiction, anger, lust, greed, laziness, gossip, you know, whatever you fight with, that's when the battle ramps up. Those are outward things. Those are things that we deal with on the outside. But Jacob thought his giant was his brother, that outward thing. He thought it was his brother, but it was really the stuff inside him. You know, the stuff of his past, like fear or deception, greed, insecurity, just to name a few. The same with us. We may have struggles on the outside, our anger, addiction, whatever, but we have to come to the root of the problem, and that's where God meets us and we wrestle. That's where we come to a place to make a difference in our life. We can stop our outward actions for a little while. But unless we deal with the inside and the root cause of, of those things, it'll come back. Does that make sense? So we deal with the root, root of who we are. Jacob had matured, and he knew he wanted or needed to, to make things right with his brother. But I believe, much like us, he knew that what he needed to do but not totally made the changes on the inside. Thus, the wrestle with God. We read that Jacob began to wrestle that man, or God, until morning. And then Jacob would not stop until the man, God, put his hip out of socket. Not until we are at our lowest, our most helpless point, will we listen to God often. Tony Evans says it like this. I love this. Sometimes God lets you hit rock bottom so that you will discover he is the rock at your bottom. Isn't that good? I love that. He lets us struggle, and then he is sitting there all the time saying, I'm here. I've got you. I've got you. I'm the rock. We begin to wrestle with God. There's always more going on than we first understand, and God always uses our struggles, our problems to transform us for the good. You see, change often comes through the door of pain. Jacob tells God, uh, he will not let go of him until he blesses him. And God asks this funny question. So what's your name? You know, they've been wrestling all night. And then God says, what's your name? Like, again, as Brian says, it's not because God needs an, uh, information. He knew. But he wanted to know what Jacob said. And Jacob said, Jacob. And God said, no. No. Change has been made on the inside. Because you have been persistent and you have prevailed you have pushed through your pain, and now, because of that, you are not Jacob. You are Israel. You are Israel. That will be your name. You are not a man of deception, and you didn't get ahead because of your deception. Now you are going to get ahead because of whose you are. It's God's choice. God often uses external situations to reveal an internal 
condition. Look at Genesis 32, 30. So Jacob named the place Peniel, explaining, certainly I have seen God face to face and have survived. That is a very important statement. And you notice, well, you may have not have noticed, but a lot of the songs this morning talked about God face to face. I've come face to face with him. And until we do that, we cannot understand fully what it's like to be in partnership with God. LaDonna, can you help me just a sec? Just for this illustration, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm God. I'm just saying for the sake of this illustration, I'm going to play God. And LaDonna is going to play LaDonna, okay? <laughs> so, okay, let's walk. We're going to walk side by side here. And uh, LaDonna, I've got some exciting things. I'm speaking as God. I've got some exciting things that are going to happen, you know, as we go along. Uh, I just want to tell you about the Boys and Girls Club. It's just really exciting. We're going to make that possible. I mean, you know. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. You know, out there in the future, it's going to be really good. Yeah. I mean, we house 14 guys right now. We're going to be able to house 27 guys, and then... That didn't work. Okay, you ran ahead of me. Okay. 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 I'm telling you that you have... That you have things in your future that I want to do for you and such... Are you there? Are you there? Okay. No, that's not working either. That's not working. Because you're, you're doing it by works. You're doing what you know to do, what you've done, what you've read. You know, there's no relationship in that. I got an idea. No, face to face. We're face to face. I'm God. You're LaDonna. I want to talk to you, LaDonna. I want to talk to you face to face as my friend. Something is going to happen in your future. And the Boys and Girls Club is going to become available. And we're going to move. We're going to move, and it's going to be beautiful. And LaDonna, you're going to be able to expand. But you're not going to be able to expand like you think because you, some things want to teach you. And so you're going to dance with me. We're going to do it at the right time. We're going to do it at the right, right place. You know why, LaDonna? Because we have relationship. We have relationship. We're face to face. Okay? You see, that's what happens when you become face to face with God. You have relationship. You can do all this behind. You can, you know, you can do what you know to do, or you can get excited about what God is doing and run ahead of Him and get out and do your own thing. But the most important thing is to, to look at Him face to face. Then you have relationship. Then you know that you know that you know that you're hearing God. And when you have relationship, you feel that tug on your heart. You feel that tug on your heart that says, hang on. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. You know, has anybody in here ever done ropes course? Yeah, yeah. I know some of you that were my youth. I know you did. But you know that, well, you know, there's a couple things. Uh, Sherry, we did that swinging bridge thing. And... Um, you know, and walking across the, the, the big pole on way up high and everything. You know, one thing, when, when, like when you began, began to get uh, frightened or fearful, one thing a good instructor says at the other end is, look at me. Look at me. Don't look down. You know, because often the job looks overwhelming or your life looks overwhelming or being alone all the time after you've been married for all these years and all of a sudden she's gone or he's gone it is overwhelming but as we have that face to face with Jesus we have that partnership and we're looking into his eyes can I tell you something it's possible it is possible when we have relationship it's not possible just by what we know but it is possible because of relationship God's plans for you for your life far out, out far exceed the circumstances of your day. Look at Isaiah 46, 4. We are reminded, I have made you and I will carry you, I will sustain you and I will rescue you. When we have trials, God's greatest desire is for us to walk face to face. Number two, I can do all things through Christ as I learn to be content. That's another word that we wish we could take out of the dictionary contentment because 
Americans and we're, we're, we've got drive and we want to do things. Well, there's a, and, and, and we, you know, we think if we're not doing something, then, you know, we're, we're lazy or whatever. And there, there is a difference in contentment and complacent. You know, in contentment, we uh, work on the things that we can change and we accept the things that we cannot change. When we're complacent, it's like, okay, I'm just going to sit here. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I'm, you know, it, it is, you know, that's, that's different. Being content is something on the inside. Paul says it like this in uh, Philippians 4, 11. For I have learned in whatever, whatever. Now, see, this is previous to I can do all things. As he sits in a prison cell. I mean, he sits in a grimy prison. Says this, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. You see, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That doesn't mean we should lower our expectations and just anticipate hardships. But it does mean this. We learn to accept where we are, even if it's in a valley for a time with full assurance that trouble will not last forever. We uh, work toward our goals while not becoming impatient and frustrated in the journey. And we must praise God for what we have accomplished while expecting that there is more to come. You see, it is a, being in a state of mind that, that, whether, that we don't spend all winter longing for spring or all summer frustrated that it's not fall. It's appreciating the season that we're in knowing that this season will change there will be a new season but appreciating where we are it is easy for uh, it is easy to long for certain things in our lives and miss the amazing right now going on around us did you hear that the right now going on around us we may for example yearn for a new house and and forget to make memories right where we are while we're searching you hear what i'm saying or we may long for a bigger ministry and not take the time to ah at the progress that god has put in our laps right now you see the key is a thankful heart this is the day that the lord hath made and i will rejoice and be glad in it you see that's a matter of my decision i will i make a decision I will rejoice. I may not like the circumstances. I may not like the stuff that I'm going through. But you know what? I'm going to rejoice because he said so. And when I rejoice, something happens. Sheila Walsh says it this way. Peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of God. You see, when we have that face-to-face relationship, you can walk through all kinds of things knowing that he's got this. The third one is, I can do all things as my vision is corrected, or maybe better said, as I learn to look through my spiritual eyes. Okay, let's see. I need a volunteer somewhere on this side. Volunteer. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Terry. Okay. Well, matter of fact, wait, just stay right there. Okay, Terry, I'm going to ask you to walk around here, and I want you, uh, Jack, wave your hand. Jack, you see Jack over there? He's waving his hand. Jack, okay. I want you to walk around here and then go over there and sit down by Jack. Just real quickly, go ahead. You can do that. This is really hard, isn't it? You can do it. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, yeah, encourage you, encourage you. Okay, yeah, there you go. Okay, you got that. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Come on, Terry. (laughs) Terry. Terry, quickly come back over where you were. Good, good. Okay. Would you follow him back there, Jimmy, and help him out just a minute? Okay, right there. That's good. That's good, Terry. Won't make it real hard on you. Okay, Jimmy is going to help him out just a little bit. Yeah. (laughs) Can you see Terry? Okay. Can you go back and sit by Jack again? Please don't help him out. Go ahead. Wrong, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> oh, 
okay, good enough. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Sight is a powerful, powerful thing, isn't it? But our, uh, as powerful as our eyeballs are, they have one significant limitation. Every single eye in this room has a fatal flaw. Your eyes can only see physical things, physical reality. They can see cars, people, buildings, um, planes, dogs, grass, trees, computers, whatever. These things are all physical, and they are the only part of a reality accessible to our eyes. Our eyeballs are completely useless when it is pertaining to spiritual reality. The spiritual side of life, just as real as a physical side, we just can't see it. Don't make the mistake of thinking that the spiritual is less real than the physical. It is not. It is not. It is just as real, only we can't see it. But it's there. As real as the eyeballs in Terry's head is the spiritual eyes in his heart. Every human being has spiritual eyes, but not everyone uses them. Just like the illustration, Terry saw, he came, sat down, but when he was not using his eyes, he had no idea other than the pastor almost ruining my illustration, coughing. <laughs> he had no idea where to go to sit down. The same thing, people, happen with the spiritual eyes in our heart. I'm just kidding, honey. The same thing happens with the spiritual eyes. Seriously, every one of us were given spiritual eyes in our heart when we received Jesus Christ. But until we have that face-to-face -face relationship, we are blinded. We have no idea of what we're doing, where we're going. It's, it's I'm on my own. But when we have that face-to-face -face with Jesus, our spiritual eyes all of a sudden become very keenly aware of what's going on. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. It says this, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing, among whom the God of this age has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, so they would not see the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. That's what happens when our spiritual eyes are closed, we are as if we are blind. So we have to get that face-to-face -face relationship with God who gives us that keen insight to where I want you to move now because if you do this, it's going to be a little too soon. You know what? If you run out and get, I'm just using the Boys and Girls Club because we got that, uh, uh, we heard the miracle earlier, but if you run out on your own and you start doing this and doing that and striving and striving, but you see God says, I got this. I got this. I know. I've got children that are ready to seed into that. Let me use them. And that's what happened. Spiritual eyes. Our spiritual eyes are open. I want you to listen. Listen to this scripture. This is uh, taken out of Psalm 73. But I want you just to sit back. Matter of fact, and just close your eyes and listen to this scripture of this man using his physical eyes. No doubt about it, God is good. Good to good people, good to the good-hearted. But I nearly missed it, missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking up to the people at the top, envying the wicked who have made it, who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the whole wide world. Pretentious with arrogance, they wear the latest fashions in violence, pampered and overfed, decked out in silk bowls of silliness. They jeer using words to kill. They bully their way with words. They're full of hot air, loud mouths disturbing the peace. People actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. What's going on here? Is God out to lunch? Nobody's tending the store. The wicked get by with everything. They have it made, piling up riches. I've been stupid to play by the rules. What has it gotten me? A long run of bad luck, that's what. A slap in the face every time I walk out the door. If I'd given in and talked like this, I would have betrayed your dear, ch your dear children. Still, when I tried to figure it out, all I got was a splitting headache. Well, that could be written like this. 
Well, the criminal goes free on a technicality. The deceitful man is at work, gets to keep his job. The gossiping woman has a better figure. The disrespectful teenager has all the latest gadgets. The politician loots the public coffers and then gets immunity. The general, supervi uh, the general supervises a massacre of thousands of, and continues to live like a king. You see, that's with fleshly eyes. We see everything going on. This is just not fair. That's not fair. Anybody ever said that? This is not fair. Why did this happen to me? I'm a good person. Good things shouldn't happen. I mean, bad things shouldn't happen to good people. Guess what? Guess what? We're not immune. And another guess what? Sometimes God wants to use those things to mold us and to make us into, I mean, the things that, the very things that we curse may be the thing that God is using to promote us. You know, the very thing. I, I think, I, I, won't, I won't do this yet. I won't, I'll go back to that maybe. Okay, now, let's think about this. That was a guy speaking out of his physical eyes, what he saw, right? What he saw, what, what, what was going on around him. But he had a V8 moment. Until I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I saw the whole picture, the slippery road you've put them on with the final crash in a ditch of delusions. In the blink of an eye, disaster. A blind curve in the dark and nightmare. We wake up and rub our eyes, nothing. There's nothing to them, and there never was. When I was beleaguered and bitter, totally consumed by envy, I was totally ignorant, a dumb ox in your very presence. I'm still in your presence, but you've taken my hand. You wisely and tenderly lead me, and then you bless me. You're all I want in heaven. You're all I want on earth. When my skin sags and my bones get brittle, God is rock firm and faithful. Look, those who left you are falling apart. Deserters, they'll never be heard from again. But I'm in the very presence of God. Oh, how refreshing it is. I've made Lord God my home. God, I'm telling the world what you do. That was the same psalm. Is that crazy? That was the same man as he was writing, but he was seen first through his physical eyes, and then he began to see through his spiritual eyes. They're, you know, those people that, that look like they're getting everything, there is an end of that road, you know? And, and we get in trouble when we look around at everybody else and we judge ourselves by everybody else. You know, when we have relationship with Jesus and we have relationship with him, we're face to face with him. Guess who he's judging? I mean, he's looking at us. He's looking at us. He's not looking at 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 somebody else and saying, well, you should be like them. He's looking at us saying, Pam, I want you to walk with me. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And if my eyes are totally on him, I get it. I understand what he's wanting. All of a sudden, he began to connect with God, and he started seeing through his spiritual eyes in this psalm. We began to understand that we walk by faith and not by sight, as the scripture says. You know that scripture that's another one that everybody knows, Hebrews 11, 1, and this is the way it's written in the NIV. Now, faith is the confidence that we hope for, that what we hope for, and the assurance of, about what we do not see. Listen to it in the message. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. A.W. Tozer writes this. This is a really great explanation of that scripture. What can all this mean except that we have in our hearts organs by means of which we can know God as certainly as we know material things through our familiar five senses? We apprehend the physical world by exercising the faculties given us for that purpose. And we possess spiritual faculties by means of which we can know God and the spiritual world if we will obey the Spirit's urge and begin to use them. Everyone in here has been given spiritual eyes. It is up to us to say, Father, I want a relationship with you. I am walking with you. I'm listening to you. I'm zoned into you. The naysayers may be hollering at me, but I'm, in, I'm zoned into you. Here is my prayer for my spiritual eyes. Help me to see sin the way God sees it. 
and to believe what God shows me. Help me see others the way God sees them and to believe what God shows me. Help me to see myself the way God sees me and believe what God shows me. Help me to see my circumstances the way God sees them and to believe what God shows me. Did you notice that every one of them comes with a, a condition and a, a promise and a condition? Then believe what God shows me. He can show you all day and all night, but then you, we must believe him. Praise team, would you make your way up here? Um, whether during trials, which uh, seem insurmountable, as we talked about, or with learning to walk in contentment, or learning to look through spiritual eyes, we have to come to a place where we understand that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You know, there's one issue that we have to deal with before that, though, and that is having a relationship with Jesus. You know, it's, it's the only way we can listen is if we have a relationship with him. And so this morning, as you stand, I just want to ask, is there anybody here that, that needs to get things straight with, with the Lord and the need to get on that face-to-face -face relationship, that face-to-face -face experience with God where they know that they know that they know that they are a child of the King. If there's, if everybody just bow your heads, close your eyes. If there is anybody here that has never received Christ or maybe you've received him and you've kind of walked away or, or maybe got numb to his voice, if you would just lift your hand, we'll just, we'll pray together. Okay, then I'm assuming everybody here has met Jesus and has a relationship with Jesus. You can, you can go ahead and look up. And I, I just want to ask you another question. Um, have you been using your spiritual eyes? Do you have a face-to-face? -face, I'm, I'm not talking about a book knowledge, uh, not a, uh, just a head thing, but a heart thing where you have relationship and you're... And you're guided day by day and you have the confidence I mean you you just really have the confidence that I can do all things through Christ I mean that there is nothing that that God that can happens to me that with God I can't handle you know I, I'm just I'm asking you today if you'll make that commitment with me to get closer and closer so that my eyesight my spiritual eyesight will be 2020 yeah you know, we get glasses to correct our physical eyes, but often it takes calluses to get our spiritual eyesight. You know, you know what I'm saying? It takes time on our knees, time on our face to be able to see face to face with him. Would you just pray with me? Father, today, today, Lord, we, we want to walk so much into relationship with you so much. We don't, we don't want to run ahead of you. We don't want to lag behind you. But Father, we want to be face to face with you and we want to have relationship with you so that our spiritual eyes are heightened, Lord, and, and Lord, that we will understand um, maybe the mysteries that are around us that, that the world can't understand. But because we have that face to face relationship with you, we understand your mysteries and, and Lord, we're able to walk in contentment. Because we know, God, we know above all things that you are working things for our good and your glory. And so, God, heighten our spiritual eyes. And, Lord, as I ask that, I, I, I feel a little funny because I know, Lord, uh, part of that rests on us. The, the coming to a place to, uh, uh, to, to, to develop relationship with you, spending time with you to getting to know you and so father we do we we will right now commit to do our part and father i know you are faithful to do yours we bless you today in jesus name amen we're gonna close with this song and this is a this is a this is a prayer that that we pray is god show me your glory show me i want to see i want to see you I want to see you. That's our prayer. I want to see you, God, so show me your glory.
caught a glimpse of your splendor from the corner of my eye. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, it was like a flash of lightning reflected off the sky. Well, I know I'll never be the same. Show me your glory. Send down your presence. I want to see your face. Show me your glory. Majesty shines about you. I can't go on without you, Lord. our prayer show us your glory lord would you grab somebody's hand let's go change the world